What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about the churches need to be opened back up. Wait till after the intro to see what I mean. But first, so something new. I have a new intro that's going to be played after I stop talking. <laughs> but I'm super excited about it and I'll talk a little bit more about it after it plays. And yeah, wait, just go ahead. <laughs> Guys, that was my brand new intro and I'm super excited about it. I'm a little sad to get rid of the Every Little Thing song because, you know, I've had it since like the beginning of my channel. But some of you guys may know that it got copyrighted, so I had to make a new intro and I'm super excited about this one. Levi Kelly did a great job, so make sure you go check his stuff out down below. He's the one who filmed it, edited it, all that stuff. So yeah, his links are down below. And today, well, actually, before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload. Also, give this video a thumbs up. Yeah, so you saw the title, Why the Churches Need to be Opened Back Up. And you might think I'm crazy and like, oh my gosh, the coronavirus is going around, you know? We can't go out and we don't want to get sick and all that stuff. But we're going to talk about this. First of all, I want to encourage you guys to get your nose out of the news and get it into the Word of God. The more that you put your focus in the news and on everything the media is trying to tell us, the more fear that you're going to take in. And we need to stay on the straight and narrow and stay in the Word of God and stop focusing on worldly things because, I mean, the Bible talks about, you know, we are in this world, but we're not of the world. We're not supposed to be constantly consumed by the things of this world. And I'm not saying it's bad to watch the news. It's not bad necessarily, but it's when you are constantly consuming news, media, all that stuff, when it can just mess with you. <laughs> it can really give you a spirit of fear when you are constantly giving into that. I personally, I know people are going to disagree with this, but I personally am ready for the world to open back up. And I think, yeah, if you are high risk, of course, stay home, do what you need to do. But the people that want to go back out, the people that want to get back to work, the people that want to go back to church, let them be free. And somebody posted this the other day on social media, but she basically said that the Constitution is my signed permission slip to leave the house. Completely agree. I think what they're doing is unconstitutional. They're locking us down and this is not freedom. I think that if you want to quarantine, yeah, stay inside. And if the statistics were higher and the death rate was higher, then yeah, like maybe we should be quarantining. Um, I mean, I don't necessarily disagree completely that they went into a quarantine lockdown thing, but at the same time, I believe it can be very unconstitutional against our rights, against our, our freedom, and you know, they calculated the death rate to be a lot higher than it actually turned out to be. And the CDC even edited their numbers, put out a new number, statistics, whatever, um, a couple days ago. So the Washington Post, this is another thing, because I think this is going to make suicide rates skyrocket, depression, anxiety. And I'm going to be honest myself, even being in the house for this long and not going out and working my normal job, which I'm working at home, working from home still, but it's making me like a little down. And I'm just like, oh my word, like this is insane. And I can't imagine for people who really struggle with anxiety and depression, how much it is affecting them right now. And the Washington Post, they posted this article and said nearly half of Americans report the coronavirus crisis is harming their mental health, according to a Kaiser Family Foundation poll. A federal emergency hotline for people in emotional distress registered more than 1,000% increase in April compared with the same last year. It goes on to talk about how 20,000 people texted that hotline last month too. So a thousand percent increase. All of Oh, you know what? I should tell you guys too. There's some construction going on outside and there's like literally like big trucks and stuff. So don't mind that. Yeah. 
if you hear that in the background like yeah okay this article continues online therapy company talkspace reported a 65 percent jump in clients since mid-february statistics are showing that anxiety and depression are growing in these times and the thing is, if people are out of work and they can't pay their bills, I can honestly see why people are developing more and more depression and anxiety, especially those who, they can't even feed their families right now because they live paycheck to paycheck and they are out of work and they have no way to provide. You know how many people have filed for unemployment right now? I mean, the numbers are insane. I am encouraging you guys to research and don't just listen to the media, do your research. Don't just listen to me, do your research. I am talking about the church though, so I want you guys to look that up on your own. And so I'm gonna continue on. But as Christians, like, do you believe we are covered by the blood of Jesus? Do you believe the Mark 16 verses that I've read in the past few videos, like they will, they will drink poison and it will not harm them. Do you believe that Jesus laid hands on the lepers and wasn't afraid to pray for them for their healing and they got healed? Do you believe that? We're supposed to follow his example. See, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet. So he said, I'll make a helpmeet for him. God literally said it's not good for a man to be alone. You know how much the Bible talks about fellowship and gathering together with other believers and having fellowship and iron sharpening iron? The devil's done this to me before too. He wants to make you feel alone and isolated and like nobody understands you, nobody's struggling with the things you're struggling with, nobody's struggling with temptation. But the cool thing is that we have the Holy Spirit as Christians, as followers of Jesus, living inside of us and he is our helper and our comforter he helps us overcome the flesh because the flesh wars against the spirit so the holy spirit helps us overcome that and helps us have the joy of the lord you have to rely on god rely on the holy spirit as your strength because we can't do this on our own if we try to do this on our own yeah we're gonna get depressed we're gonna get anxiety and i had to realize that you know what i'm relying on my own strength and that's why i'm getting down on myself that is why you have to trust in the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to help you and give you strength to overcome. Can't do this on our own strength. Rely on Him. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 through 25 says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, exhorting one another, encouraging one another, helping one another, Iron sharpening iron, strengthen each other. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 through 20. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing, one, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also, you are called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the Father through him. So that is encouragement for you guys, and that's what we're supposed to be doing as the body of Christ is to put on love, put on humility and meekness and long suffering and kindness. We're supposed to have the fruits of the Spirit. When you get filled with the Spirit, those fruits are gonna follow because the closer you get to God, the more you're gonna grow in the Lord and you're gonna grow spiritually. And those fruits are gonna start to show. Jesus said, by the fruits you shall know them. So and we're supposed to be letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs 
singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So also, we need the fivefold ministry working in the church, working together as a body of believers and the spiritual gifts. So Ephesians chapter 4, 11 through 16 says, And he himself, which is God, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. So we're not all called to the same thing. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. So Christ is the head of the church. From whom the whole body joint and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So, you know, we're supposed to have the edifying of the body and all the different ministries working together to really help grow the body of Christ. You know, we're the body of Christ together. The building is not the church. We are the church, and yes, there's hypocrites in the building, but there's not <laughs> hypocrites in the church. And my dad always says that. Okay, here's the thing. So Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So guys, I've been talking to y'all about this, about making disciples, about going out and spreading the Great Commission, doing what we're called to do, and how Christians are supposed to be bold for Jesus. We shouldn't be the ones to back down. We are a light in the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And we should be literally a city on a hill to where the people out there in the world, they literally think we look so much different and we're going against the grain and we're, we're crazy because we look nothing like the world. We're not supposed to look like the world. So go therefore and make disciples, keyword disciples, I'm gonna talk to you about this in a second, of all nation, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age, amen. So, it says teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So we're supposed to be teaching. We need the body of believers to get back together, and you know, we have teachings online, and that's great. But listen to this, disciples. So, disciples. It doesn't say go out and make salvations, but disciples. So, when you lead somebody to salvation. Don't just lead them to salvation and let them be. Lead them and teach them in the word and don't just leave them hanging. We need each other. We need fellowship as believers. We need to get back together so we can build each other up in the faith and help edify the body and encourage others to be on fire for Jesus. And the thing is, we don't need to go back to church as usual. We don't need to go back to normal. We need to go back to a radical church so that's why I hope and pray you guys are using this time to get back on fire for God, especially pastors, because um, as Matt Chandler says, the pulpit drives the church. And it's important that pastors are prayed up and studied up and teachers. So when you go back in the church, you need to realize that, wow, my church is really not on fire for God. And it's time to turn this ship around and go from a cruise ship church to a battleship church. That was also a quote. I've been reading a lot of like on fire pastors lately who are really calling the church to wake up and repent and get back on our knees and get on fire for God. Acts chapter four, verses 29 through 31 says, now Lord, look on their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. God is able to give us boldness and he's able to, our God is a consuming fire and he's able to consume our churches, our church body with fire and just seeing the, the signs and wonders and miracles being done, you know, those are still for today. Healing is still for today. Tongues is still for today. All the spiritual gifts are still for today. Read Corinthians, read the book of Acts. And I encourage you guys to study more on how the church really works because I am just kind of doing a quick overline of, you know, fellowship and stuff right now. In John chapter 21, Jesus said, feed my sheep three times. That shows how important it is. Feed my sheep 
feed my sheep, feed my sheep. We're supposed to feed his sheep, you know, Baby Christians, you know, they, they maybe need milk for a time, but it is important that we're not just teaching milk all the time, that we're helping the church body grow and teach the meat of the Word of God. People need the full truth of the Word of God. They don't need like, oh, here's some sugar cookies, here's some milk, here's some chocolate chip cookies and some cereal and some Reese's Puffs. No, we need the meat. We need the steak and potatoes. Come on, y'all. You know, you agree with me? Come on. Like, I can't hear you guys because obviously this is a video, but come on, we need to feed his sheep. We need to make disciples. We need fellowship. We need to get back together. And we can't go back to the same. We can't go back to normal. When we go out there, it's time for change. Do something for God that you've never done before. Of course, be led by him. Be led by his spirit. But whatever God's calling you to do, do it and use this time as preparation. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 through 12 says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And threefold cord is not quickly broken. So two are better than one. And like I said before, iron sharpens iron. So get friends who are on fire for God because friends who are not on fire for God, they're just gonna pull you right down with them. And they're gonna, it's, okay, listen to this. It's easier to drag somebody down than it is to pull somebody up. So I'm not saying like neglect those people and stop being friends with those people because you can help them grow. But you need mentors. You need people who are on fire for God who can help you maintain your fire, check in on you, accountability to see how you're doing. And I hope and pray that your church is teaching the 100% truth of the Word of God, addressing sins, you know, fulfilling the fivefold ministry. I just read the scripture, apostles, prophets, teacher, teachers, pastors, all that stuff. And really just growing in the Spirit and allowing the Holy Spirit to have His way in the church services and not just making you feel comfortable all the time, but pushing you to grow in your faith towards God. Because your church shouldn't make you feel comfortable, but your church should make you feel uncomfortable in a way that you want to grow and you want to have spiritual growth and growth closer to God and you want to go out and fulfill the Great Commission. And just like I talked about last week, just doing the things that we as believers, and these signs will follow them that believe, are supposed to be doing. And prayer in the church is so important. If your church isn't praying, it's gonna be a powerless church. I was driving the other day in the car and you know, I was about to turn on a David Wilkerson sermon, good old David Wilkerson, he's so good. Um, and this thought came to my mind and I, I believe it was from the Holy Spirit because I can't come up with stuff like this on my own. But I believe that some of you right now are spiritually dehydrated. And yeah, we're supposed to be using this time to get more on fire. But some of you right now are spiritually dehydrated. And you are so used to getting that dose of spiritual food on Sunday mornings that all of a sudden that's gone, that's taken from you, the rug has been ripped out from underneath you, and now you are spiritually dehydrated. You're spiritually dead because you are not getting that daily dose on Sunday mornings that you were used to getting. And now the church building is closed. The church building is closed. And now you are, you are spiritually dehydrated. So I'm encouraging you, if you are spiritually dehydrated right now, you know, the Bible says if you're lukewarm, God says this, I will spit you out of my mouth. It says that in Revelation. If you are spiritually dehydrated right now, it's time to get back on fire for God. It's time to ignite your fire. You're not alone. If you are spiritually dehydrated right now, the enemy wants to make you feel alone, isolated, like nobody understands. But listen, the Lord understands. The Lord is with you. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Get back on fire. Get in that word. Ask God to consume you with his fire and stay on fire. And don't let Sunday be your only time of spiritual food because church doesn't make you a Christian. Sundays don't make you a Christian. Going to church, you know, hearing from your pastor, listening to sermons don't make you a Christian. But having a relationship with the Father, the creator of the universe does. So make sure that you are doing that and you're on fire 
for God and you love God and you're passionate about Jesus. Guys, I hope this was encouraging to you. And that was my big thing about this. I, I know that we can't necessarily have fellowship right now, but I mean, FaceTime the ones you love, reach out to people right now, stay close to Jesus, stay in this word, <laughs> and you know, know that God is with you. So thanks again to Levi Kelly for making my new intro, and he also made an outro, so that's coming soon. New merch is coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Keep looking to Jesus. Remember that everything's going to be all good and peace out. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Make sure you check out my other videos over here and subscribe over there. My goodness, that's so loud. If you're getting... <laughs>